Greetings everyone, this is Connor from Degora TV, and in this video I'll be discussing why there is no mods on the PS4 for the Skyrim Special Edition. Okay, so if you're a part of the Bethesda community at all, whether that is with the Fallout community or with the Elder Scrolls community on the Bethesda Game Studio side of things, this would have been a big bit of news over this past week. And it's the the mod system that have been that was promised, you know, to come out with Fallout 4 and to come out with the Skyrim Special Edition have been cancelled indefinitely or postponed indefinitely is the language that Bethesda used for not coming out on Sony because they submitted it with the Fallout 4 mod system. It came out late. It's been a whole story that's been going on, which I'm gonna dive into right now. Where Basically, E3 of last year, E3 went before the game came out in 2015, where Todd Howard came on stage at the Microsoft press conference and said, we're going to be having mods on consoles. Mods on consoles is going to be a thing, and there's going to be something where, you know, you'll be able to go on, they're going to be approved by Bethesda, it's not going to be ones that are going to be changing the landscape dramatically, or, you know, a huge memory, there's going to be a memory limit of mods that you can download, it's mainly going to be cosmetics, and you can download them from the... A menu that is going to be on the Fallout 4 game page and then you can download them there and it would be easy of access and everything. But it's going to be coming out on Microsoft first because they've got a little bit of a deal going on between Bethesda Game Studios and Microsoft. It's going to be going to Microsoft first, so the Xbox systems, and then it will be coming to Sony about a month or so after. So, it comes out on Microsoft later than expected because, you know, we're submitting it and working out the nooks and crannies of it all. It come out later, so, but it still came out on Microsoft and it'd be going down very well. The, the, the console players on the Xbox One have been really enjoying it. It's gone down swimmingly. And then it comes down to the PS4. And uh, they said it was going to be a month later. And then a month after that, I said, we've got some problems happening with Sony. So, we're going to have to try and work our, our way around this. And it seems that, you know, all the projects kind of took a hold a little bit. And, you know, it was kind of put on the back bench. And then a few months later... Of people kind of getting a bit angry about it on the on the uh, uh, the PlayStation 4 and the Sony platforms of saying, okay, we want this, you know, kind of now. We, we this is like four months, you know, later than the Xbox One. We've been having the game now almost three years. We kind of want it to come out, and then Bethesda was like, no worries, we're submitting it. You know, it's submitted now to Sony. All they've got to do is accept it, and then we'll bring it on immediately to the PlayStation platform for the PlayStation 4 and for Fallout 4, and then. Sony just went and rejected it. It was like, no, when, this is not allowed. And then Bethesda then come out after the, with this news, blaming Sony completely for this reason, saying, you know, we put in this system that we believe advised by their terms of service. It was accepted on Microsoft, this exact service that, we, that, that we're providing. And it's been rejected by Sony. So, really, this is a thing that... Bethesda is, is, you know, maybe took the time with me. They're at fault. You know, they're not completely blameless for, you know, maybe not getting it out there, being as completely... In conversation with, you know, the fan base as much as possible, you know, the odd word here and there really wasn't enough for people to kind of really get an understanding of what's happening. But, and we haven't yet, as the time of recording, had a response from Sony. If we do get one, I'll probably make another video on that, of why it's been rejected for Fallout 4. But, the mods that we, we're going to be getting that we wanted to see, you know, it's going to be not happening. You know, it's a shame and it's kind of, really, I can't really see a solid reason of why it's not going to be allowed for Fallout 4. And really for Skyrim as well, because, you know, the Bethesda have now pretty much washed their hands with this issue. They've been working on it for a while. They're trying to find all the reasons, you know, to get it fitted in and it's just been pretty much cancelled. You know, they've gone, no, nope, this is too difficult, you know, for us to kind of really get an idea of why we want, you know, and really get it onto the PlayStation platform. They've compromised it way too much, and they've said, no, okay, we've tried it, you know, we're just going to say, we, if we want to come back to it, we can, but let's not forget they've got three other projects to work on. Three big projects, and that's not counting the phone games that they've got. They've got this, Star, I, th I think it was Stargazer or something like that, that game that they've got coming out, uh, the leaked one that they haven't officially revealed yet. They've got another project, another large-scale Bethesda Star project, and they've got the Elder Scrolls Six that they're working on right now, and this was kind of getting in the way a little bit, you know, with the Sky Special Edition coming out next month, you know, it would have been great to, you know, to have mods on consoles there, which is going to have for the Xbox One, because they've got it approved there, they've got it sorted, it's going to be out there on launch, but for the PlayStation 4, you know, there's really not a lot they can do, and a lot of a blame I've seen has been going to Bethesda, which, you know, like I said, they're not completely blameless, you know, like, a bit of communication would have gone a, a bit further, you know, they could have tried and submitted it earlier, and, you know, they was late to the party with it, and, um, but, you know, Sony have rejected it, and I kind of find it really crazy how Sony have rejected it when you look at another bit of news that's come out over the last couple of days, and that's to do with the game called Farming Simulator 17, where they have accepted the modding system for that, so with that game, you can get mods on consoles, 
What the hell? What's going? What's happening? You know, like, we, why can't they have it for the Bethesda games and we yet have it for Farming Simulator? And I was trying to think of reasons why, and I don't really find one because uh, uh, one of the thoughts that I had was possibly to do with profanity because there is a, a few mods that have come onto the Xbox One which have, you know, been a bit raunchy, <laughs> maybe for Sony's liking, but. You know, the game's an 18. It's an 18 rating, and even if it wasn't an 18 rating, the rating of the game can still change. And they've got loads of games on the PlayStation 4, like, especially ones from Japan, the anime kind of games, which are completely hugely profane, hugely profane compared to some of the mods that we've been getting on Fallout 4 for the consoles. So I don't really see what is there to be rejected, you know, like, maybe it's something to do with moderation, it's something to do with that, because Sony are not going to moderate them themselves, and maybe a bit of back and forth between there, but judging by the what Bethesda have said, they're not happy with Sony at all. And the barriers between the two of them kind of seems to be kind of like lifting a little bit, you know, it kind of seems to be a little bit of a falling out because Bethesda issues have always kind of seemed to be, you know, a Microsoft company, you know, like we're, we're more leaning towards Microsoft, you know, like Todd Howard appears on the trailer for the Xbox Scorpio, you know, Morrowind was an Xbox console exclusive, you know, Oblivion was, you know, all the trailers and all the gameplay demos was played on the PlayStation 4 at E3 and so on. So, on the Xbox 360, sorry, not PlayStation 4. So, the idea there, you know, that these two companies have been, you know, getting on gelling really well has not truly been the case for a long time, and now it seems the barrier between the two is kind of rising immensely. You know, this I don't. This definitely doesn't mean, you know, that we're going to be having exclusives of the Xbox One. You know, definitely, like, some people are throwing that idea around their heads, and I definitely don't see that being the case, mainly because is that Bethesda is a huge market, and that is, the, the PlayStation market is the biggest in gaming. You know, it's got the most people playing on PlayStation, it's sold most of the copies on there, they've made most of the money out of the PlayStation platform, and that's not going to go away. That's not just going to, they're not just going to completely ignore that for the need to Really, j just to have kind of have a bit of spite between the two, and you know, PlayStation are happy to make money off Bethesda, and Bethesda are happy to make money off, you know, PlayStation at the same time, and you kind of still couldn't be able to bring the games out on both platforms. Okay, so I, I just wanted to kind of go into some of the reasons now for PlayStation players, you know, why they would still want to get the special edition of Skyrim, because you know that was the biggest change for console players to have mods onto the games, you know, to be able to download user-created content and. You know, we're not really, they're not going to be getting that anymore, which is a huge, huge shame. And um, some people say, like, what, well, why would I want to get this now? You know, it's not going to be different. It's not going to be any way, shape or form improved of what happened with the original game. And that's not strictly true. And one of the main reasons why they should get it, and they, this is a huge reason in my opinion, is the game's going to run so much better on PlayStation 4. And the game is uh, on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One compared to the previous gen. Mainly being because, you know, loading screens were a huge problem, especially with the PlayStation 3. The game ran like crap on the PlayStation 3. It took so long to load, and the game froze all the time. We're going to be having a lot less of that. You know, loading screens are going to be minimised immensely. The game's going to look a lot better for another one. You know, we've seen that in the trailers, huh? The volumetric lightning, the extra foliage. The game looks better, it looks different, it's going to be better to play. And hopefully that, you know, that's something that you really... the new players are going to be of Xbox One and PlayStation 4 are going to be wanted to give Skyrim a go. Also, let's not forget there's going to be a lot of new players in this generation, a new era, of, a new era of gamers, you know, of what's happened over the past three years or whatever. And, you know, that probably never played Skyrim, so, you know, Skyrim is a treasured game. It's one of the best games that's ever come out. And, you know, to have to be able to play that, you know, for the first time is also another reason why people should get it. But also, there's a lot of people that have played Skyrim as well. And, you know, those people... You know, they, they haven't played the game maybe for, you know, like, four, three, four years, you know, when they gave in the console. Because a lot of people, when they got the new consoles, they gave in their Xbox 360, they gave in their PlayStation 3. And have not had a chance to play Skyrim again, unless they've had, you know, a, a copy of the version of the PC. Well, a lot of people haven't. So, being able to play Skyrim again, you know, a lot of people have been having droughts of Skyrim and looking forward to getting their hands on it again. You know, at the end of the day, Special Edition is really for those console people, you know, who got the new console, who can't play that game again. And it's a good thing, you know, for them, you know, because, like, Skyrim, like I said, is a treasured game where, you know, really the, the amount of time you can have in the game is an immense amount of time, a huge amount of time. And being able to pick up that game again and play it is going to be something that's going to sell a lot of copies and it's going to get a lot of people excited. And um, for the PC people, you know, this obviously doesn't affect the PC people at all, that's why I haven't brought them up, but, you know, it's still disappointing for me, because there's a big community over there, big Bethesda community of what we get in comments of people saying they're disappointed with how Bethesda have managed mods on PlayStation 4, and how Sony have kind of reacted to it, and, you know, I'm disappointed for those people, because, you know, it's a big thing, the modding community, it's the best part of the Elder Scrolls series, in my opinion, and, you know, they're not going to be able to get that, at all, not going to be able to get it, and it's a shame, it's a huge shame. So... 
All in all, that's the end of this video. I want to hear your comments here. I want to hear your responses of what you think about mods on the PlayStation. You know, what, how do you feel about Sony's reaction to it, of accepting Farming Simulator 17 to have mods, but the Elder Scrolls, Skyrim, or Fallout 4 not to have them? What do you think about that? Le leave your comments below. Are you angry with Sony? You know, I've seen people, also a, f a few select people, talking on the internet about possibly moving consoles, you know, to the get an Xbox One so they can get mods on Skyrim and mods on Fallout 4 because they're their favourite games. So, you know, what are you along the last same lines as those people? Have you got the same, rough, the, roughly the same ideas? You know, what are you thinking? And uh, I just really want to generally hear, like, how this is really going to affect you playing Skyrim Special Edition. You know, is it going to be changing the way that you, you your ideas of characters, maybe? Because, you know, you maybe eyed up some mods that they said they've already been confirmed to come into the game, and so, you know, it's for the Argonian armor. I thought, I want that on my Argonian. But now, you know, now I'm not going to be able to get that. I might go with a brand. You know, does that change the way that you're going to go into the game? I just want to hear all these questions, answers to all these questions. So thanks a lot for watching, and uh, I hope you really enjoyed the video. And uh, I'll be back next week for another range of videos. We talk about this a lot more, by the way, on the Elder Scrolls Weekly podcast, which you can go and check out. Check out the GNM podcast. Also go over to Twitter to go and see and look at that some more as well. And thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.